your hands and just magnify his name. Wave your hands to him and then open your mouth and magnify him. Open your mouth and bless him. Open your mouth, somebody, give him praise. Open your mouth and let your praise flow. And drone him with your praise. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we bless you. I can't hear you. Lift your voice and magnify him. He wants to hear you praise him. He wants to hear you adore him. He wants to hear you in your own words. Open your mouth and let him know what he means to you. Give him glory.
is great and greatly to be praised. Can you just lift your hands in a minute as we reverence the I am that I am? For your name is great and greatly to such a strong, strong atmosphere of the presence of God. It means that anything is possible tonight. It means that whatever you came here with, you will not go back the same way. With. When the presence of God is around, anything is possible. Anything. Absolutely anything. For with God, all things are possible. For 
your name is great and greatly to you for tonight we know indeed that you are here and we know that because you are here our lives will take a new turn thank you for visitation by your spirit thank you for an outpouring of your power and your grace in this place Lord I ask that you give everyone a testimony tonight and let your name be glorified in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Hallelujah. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. John chapter 11. Let's try to be as quick as we can and then we'll pray. Hallelujah. John chapter 11 John chapter 11 I want to welcome every one of us to the miracle service of the month of June 2024 let's give God a big big hand of praise I thought you would clap better than that in praise and adoration to Jesus Amen seen God in our February's miracle service. We saw him in March. Mighty move of the spirit in April, in May. And we are here again in June. And the thing I like about the God that we serve is when it has to do with the workings of his power, it only gets better. It's always from glory to glory. There is no end. There is no limit. There is no better yesterday. Every day unfolds with something new, something different. I'd like you to know tonight that God, in as much as God will meet our needs in this place, I believe that God wants to do more than just meeting our immediate needs. I believe that God wants to bring a total transformation, a total change. He wants to ensure that we move to the next level as far as our life on earth is concerned. He wants to ensure that you step into a better version of yourself. And I tell you that if you are here tonight or you are following this meeting right now as we are alive, that God will do so much more in your life that will cause his name to be glorified. In the name of Jesus Christ. So I want to welcome every one of us. Something is wrong with this mic. Please help me with another mic. Is either it's the mic or is it setting? Okay. The mic? Okay. All right. Amen. I want to welcome um, Reverend Adi, the chaplain of St. Stephen's Military Church. You're welcome, sir. 
Always honored to have you. And he's here with his colleague, um, also Reverend John, I believe. John Patrick. God bless you. Please give him a big God bless you. Amen. So we welcome every one of us here. John chapter 11 from verse 1. We'll start from verse 1, go to a certain point, and then we'll pick out some other verses. All right? Amen. Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. And it was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore the sister sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. And when Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. Tell your neighbor what you are going through right now. It's not going to destroy you. But it is meant to glorify God. <laughs> Hallelujah. That the glory of God will be manifest in and through your life. Let's continue. But for the glory of God. That the son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister, Lazarus. That means that this was a family that Jesus should do anything for. As a matter of fact, he was supposed to be on his way. Immediately he heard that Lazarus was sick. But let's go on. So when he heard that he was sick, what did he do? He stayed two more days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. And the disciples said to him, Rabbi, lately the Jews sought to stone you, and you are you going there again? And Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. In other words, it wasn't yet time for Jesus to give his life. So no attempt on him was going to bring his death. Let's go on. These things he said, and after that he said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. Then his disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get well. However, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought that he was speaking about taking rest in sleep. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Then Thomas, who is called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go, that we may die with him. No, Thomas was a joker. So when Jesus came, so that was a sarcastic statement. Uh-huh. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now, jump to the verse where Martha began to discuss with Jesus. That should be verse 20, 21, yes. Now, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, somebody say, even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Just like whatever you ask of God tonight, he will give you. I thought you would say louder amen if you believed. Listen, the God we serve is not just a prayer hearing God. He's a prayer answering God. Are you hearing me? It's his reputation that he answers. It's not like the gods of men or the gods that were crafted by the hands of men that have ears and cannot hear is a God that both hears and answers. The Lord of heaven and earth. Let's go on. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. 
The mother said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Another sarcastic statement. But Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Verse 26. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Ask your neighbor, do you believe this? And she said to him, to show that she didn't believe, she said, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. That means she didn't believe. She believed him as the Christ, the Son of God that could work miracles, but she did not believe him as the resurrection and the life. Jesus said, what you call an event that will happen on a particular day is actually a person. He said, I am the resurrection. I am. David said in Psalms, I look up to the hills from whence comes my help. Your help is not in any human being or in any systems of men. All those things are just channels that God can use. The Bible says, my help comes from the Lord who made the heaven and the earth. And I prophesy in the name of Jesus that anything that has been dead in your life will live after tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. And every good thing that is alive in your life shall not die again. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to share something briefly and then we'll get to pray. Now, we are very familiar with this story, especially those of us who are born again and those of us who read our Bible very well. And before I continue, I want to say this. I would like to beg us for this particular service, please ensure you stay to the end. You never can tell. Your word may come at the end of the service. All right? I felt it in my spirit while I was sitting there to say, till you hear the last amen, till you see me going down, Please stay. Your word can come at any time. Your word can even come when I'm walking away from this place. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So if you made the sacrifice of coming or you are connecting online, you may as well just stay to the end. When people go before kings and noble men, they wait until they have access to see the king and they wait in the presence of the king until the king is done with them. How much more the king of kings? The one that can send kings on errand for your sake. You didn't hear what I said. The king that can send kings on errand for your sake. So when you come before his presence, wait till the end. Hmm? And let's trust God because I believe that a lot of words will be coming for people tonight. Your story will change after tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now the Bible spoke of the fact that Jesus was very close to the family of Mary, Martha and Lazarus. The Bible says Jesus loved them so much. So it was expected that as soon as Jesus heard that Lazarus was sick, it was expected that Jesus would have immediately uh, been on his way to Bethany. But the Bible says Jesus waited for two days. Now, it looks to me like Jesus already knew what was going to happen. So Jesus was in partnership with God to ensure that God would be glorified in what was about to happen. If Jesus had reached out to Lazarus immediately, Lazarus would have been fine. And that wouldn't have been a big deal because prior to this time, they had seen Jesus heal many people. As a matter of fact, not all the healings of Jesus were recorded in scripture. Many times the Bible will say, and he healed multitudes. You don't know if there were 500 or there were 1,000 or 5,000 of them. All kinds of diseases that were healed. But Jesus was at a stage where his death, which was coming soon, was going to bring glory to God. And so all the events that will precede that had to be very specific and spectacular. So it was important that Jesus waited for the situation to become very bad or worse. Not because Jesus didn't love the people he was reaching out to, but because God takes glory 
in the worst of situations that we go through. The darker the darkness, the greater the luminosity of his light. The Bible says, though darkness will cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon you and cause his glory to be seen on you. And then it says, Gentiles shall come. The reason why Gentiles will come is because there is darkness everywhere, but they see your light from afar. If there was light everywhere, no, your light will be insignificant. So the darker the crisis, the heavier the problem, the greater God will be glorified in it. And Jesus got and arrived there in Bethany. According to human timing, Jesus was late. Martha said in John eleven twenty one, 21, Lord, if you were here, my brother wouldn't have died. What she was simply saying was, Lord, you came late. Thank you for coming, but you came late. At this point, there's nothing that can be done again. He's dead and he's already buried for four days. Possibly his body was already being decomposed because in those days, only rich people had the capacity to embalm their bodies or their dead bodies or corpses. So possibly the body of Lazarus was already decaying. So there was no longer any hope. And here is a woman who was very close to Jesus, who believed in Jesus. But even in her faith, there was still a limitation. She felt that there was a limit to what Jesus could do. How is it that people can be so close to God and yet still place a limitation on the God that they serve? How come people have seen the power of God, the greatness of God? In fact, if the miracle service had ended with the worship team's ministration, I think we have enough to believe God for which we can go back and see miracles. Imagine that testimony. 18 years of addiction, alcohol delivered. Born again, healed of kidney and liver issues. What other kind of testimony are you, are you still looking for again? Talk more of the one that was shared. But sometimes it is possible that people can be so close to God, see God walk wonders and signs and miracles amongst his people. Yet, in the midst of their faith, they still place a limitation on what God can do. For instance, it is an expression of doubt to ever believe that God can come late when it has to do with your issue. That was what Martha did. She said, Lord, if you were here, my brother would not have died. That means that I've seen you heal the sick. I've seen you restore the eyes of those who are blind. I've seen you raise the cripples. I've seen you cleanse the lepers. I've even seen you cast out demons. But when it comes to a dead person, I don't think there's anything you can do. So if you were to have come early, it would have been when Lazarus was still sick. Now he's dead. There's really nothing you can do. That's what she was saying there. If you were here. Because if she believed that Jesus was the resurrection and the life, she wouldn't have been bothered about that statement. She would have been thanking God that he was here already. Because when the resurrection and the life steps in, there's really nothing to cry about again. The worst is that the body is dead. It will be brought back to life. That tells me of a set of believers and I want to talk to them tonight before we pray. That probably there are some of us here or probably following online now from any part of the world. And maybe you have gone through all kinds of things that have deferred your hope. That has bruised your capacity to believe God beyond any reasonable doubt. Maybe you have experienced a cycle of failure. Maybe you have experienced a pattern of, you know, you know, depletion. Things keep going from bad to worse and from worse to worse. And it looks like there's really nothing that can be done about your case as, as far as you are concerned. And so these are a set of people that believe that God can be late or God can come late in their life at any point. God sent me to talk to you before we begin the ministration tonight. And God said to tell you that he can never be late. Did you hear what I said? 
according to human timing, God may be late. But as far as God is concerned, he who created time always has his timing perfect. And so Martha felt that Jesus had come late. Unknown to Martha, she was about to experience a dimension of this Jesus she knew that she had never seen before. Jesus said, your brother will rise again. Martha said, I know he will rise. And then she became a theologian instantly. She said, I know he will rise on the last day. That was good theology. On the resurrection at the last day. And the reason why that will happen is because Jesus would have returned. That at his coming, in fact, the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, that the Lord would descend with a shout, with a, with a trumpet, and with the voice of an archangel, and the dead in Christ will rise first. All of this will happen at the end of this dispensation. And the Bible says the dead in Christ will rise first from their graves. I don't know how that will happen. But that's what the Bible says and I believe it. And it says those of us who are alive will be caught up to meet with the Lord in the air. That resurrection will happen because there will be an appearance of the one who is called the resurrection and the life. Yet Jesus said you don't need to wait for that day. That day is actually possible because of a person. Because of a personality. He said I am the resurrection and the life. In other words, when you bring me into the equation, there is nothing left to, to have or entertain doubt about. He said, he that believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And I like verse 26. It says, he that believes in me and live. So two sets of people. One believes in him, but still succumbs to death. I believe that God can do all things, but they are still poor. I believe that God can do all things. They are still sick. But they are believing, oh, but they are still in that condition. Their faith is not strong enough to pull them out of where they are into the miraculous workings of the power of God. I believe that God is even moving in this place, but my mother is still sick at home. I believe, but my condition still remains the same. He that believes in me, though he were dead. That's one set. But the next set of people... It says, he that believes in me and lives. That your faith is strong enough to recreate according to that which you believe. You know, many times I was just going through, I was listening to audio Bible today. And I was listening to all the healing instance. Um, all the, the occasions where Jesus healed people. And I was trying to factor, factor something while I was listening. You know, when you are tired of reading the Bible, press audio Bible, listen. Hear what I said? Ah. And I discovered that most times, when people demonstrated faith to Jesus, Jesus simply healed them by a spoken word. He would simply say, be it unto you according to your faith. For instance, the centurion whose servant was sick. He said to Jesus, I'm a man under authority. And because of that, I have soldiers under me. I say to one, go and they go. Come and they come. He said, so you don't need to come to my house. From where you are, just speak the word. And my servant will be healed. Just like I stand as a centurion. A centurion is an officer in charge of 100 soldiers. I think, uh, I don't know which one will be equivalent to that in the army. I know that the commanding officer to have around two to three hundred, or is it up to soldiers? More than that, under them. So once he speaks, somebody is going to execute that word immediately. God bless you. The commanding officer say, go and level that village. You know, Nigerian army, they are very wonderful. Though. Amen. They are, their sword is double-edged. Let me stop there. So the centurion can speak and somebody is off to execute the word. He says, so also you are that powerful, Jesus. Once you speak, there are spirits we don't see that respond to your words. There are angels that move to execute what you say. There are demons that listen and flee. And Jesus said, go your way, your servant is healed. Another time was when Jesus met the, the Greek woman 
the woman in Caesarea, the Bible says Jesus even was not even, he was not even in the city, you know the mood of healing at that time. Jesus said, "Woman, I can't give you what is meant for the children of Israel." And the woman said, "Even the dogs will eat what falls from the table." And Jesus said, "Go your way; your daughter is healed." So most of the time that people expressed faith to Jesus, I realized Jesus did not have to touch them. He didn't even have to move. He just spoke. But many times that Jesus had to stretch out his hand was simply because the faith of the people were either very low or were absent. And so believing God puts you in a state where it becomes easy to receive from God. It says, he that believes in me, though he were dead, yet he shall live again. But he that believes in me and live shall not die. So the power that can resurrect is the same power that can give life. And the Bible says that he has come that we will have life and have it in abundance. And I speak in the name of Jesus Christ. That everything, I'm saying it again, that is dead in your life, I give it life by the power of the Holy Ghost. I give life to everything that is dead in your life tonight. I speak to everything that is dead and I command it to leave this moment. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whether it is your finance, whether it is your business, your career, your mind, your spiritual life, your ministry, whatever is dead, you came here because the resurrection and the life is present in this place. And in his presence, nothing dead remains dead. Did you hear what I said? Nothing dead remains dead. There's no need to lament when Jesus is there. Unfortunately, Martha did not see that side of Jesus. Jesus said, do you believe I'm the resurrection and the life? She said, I believe you are the son of God. But this one you are calling, I don't know. This is a new theology. We need to sit down for two days and three days. There's no need to finish the chapter. You know the end of the story. The Bible says, when Lazarus came out of the grave, he said, even the Jews believed. That's what the Bible says. Even the Jews, even the priests that were against him, some of them believed. And tonight, God will so work wonders in your life. <laughs> Believe me. Don't think this is any other kind of service. Don't think this is an ordinary service. As a matter of fact, you may not know. And if you don't know, I came to tell you that in as much as you plan to come to see others receive their miracles, God designated this service for you. Yes, that this is a service it will surprise you. I've often said before that the day that God will favor you will look like every other day when you wake up. There's really nothing new in that day. Until by the end of the day, you look at yourself and you are 10 steps ahead of the previous self. The power to make that happen will rest upon your life today. In the name of Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus had actually prophesied the death of the, the resurrection of Lazarus in John chapter 5, verse 28 and 29. Maybe because he didn't mention the name of Lazarus, but he had already said it before that time. That was why he was so sure Lazarus would leave. He says, do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming, right? In which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and comfort. So Jesus knew ahead of time that this miracle was going to be a reality. That even the dead can hear the voice of the Son of God because he's the Prince of life, because he's the resurrection and the life. In Ezekiel chapter 37, the Bible tells us of the dry bones of Ezekiel, popular story that we know. God took Ezekiel to a valley full of dry bones. And God asked Ezekiel, Son of man, will these bones live? Wise answer. Only you know, O God. I'm sure Ezekiel really wanted to say, it's not possible. But out of respect for God, he closed his mouth. Say, let me not talk and offend this God now. 
the only you know. Very wise answer. And then God spoke to him. Surprised him the more. Not only will the bones live, but actually it will live because I'm going to make it happen through your mouth. He said, prophesy to these bones. Huh? And say to these bones, the word of God in the mouth of God did nothing to the bones. But the Bible says in Ezekiel 37, I believe in verse 4, it says, so I prophesied as I was commanded. Verse 5, 6, there about. It says, and suddenly there was a shaking. Somebody say suddenly. <laughs> That's what is about to happen for somebody today. Wait. As a matter of fact, I saw a credit alert. Yes. Don't worry. It will happen before the service is over. You will hear it. That means there's a grace for financial miracles. Are you hearing me? Listen, let me tell you one thing about a miracle service. A miracle service is not where we come to preach about principles and laws and how to do this and how to... Mm -mm. It's, a, it's a time for emergency response. That God will just override natural laws on your behalf. It's not a time for grammar and English. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm prophesying it again. There will be financial miracles in this place. You believe it, you receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. If I were you, I will be checking my phone from now to the end of this service. And the moment you see something, run to the front quickly. Are you hearing me? Because you know, Thomas was with Jesus. When Jesus said, let's go and wake, Thomas said, let's go and die with him. So there are some Thomases here. Amen. The moment you see anything, if you are online, just send us a report quickly. You are here, just rush forward. There's going to be an outbreak of financial miracles. I know it. That which we have heard, which we have seen, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled. Don't pray for me. We have seen it before. Countless times. As a matter of fact, that's how this ministry started. You remember that retreat we had in Unimate 2018? Where is Samino? Is he here? People saw money. I think he saw money in his Bible. Minted notes. Another lady in her purse. Another one in her bag. Rita? Okay. Rita is here now. You have uh, So, I'm not telling you what we are yet to see. As a matter of fact, sometimes I think God has been too gracious to us in this place that we don't appreciate him more than what he has done. I think so. I think so. What else are, are you looking for that you want to see that you have not seen in this place? Was it not in February miracle service here that a woman who was com um, confirmed almost dead in the hospital was brought back to life? So what else? Time should come where I just come for miracle service and we get straight to it. Because all of these things happen just so that your faith can be built up to know that he is able to do exceeding abundantly. Far above all you can ask or think. The Bible says in John chapter 20 in the last verse, he said there were many other things that Jesus did that were not written in this, in this book. He said, but these were written that you may believe that he is the son of God and that in believing you may have life. That life is the very ability that makes you walk the works of Jesus. Jesus said, he that believeth in me, the works that I do, he shall do and greater works than this. If Jesus could bring money out of the mouth of a fish, who says that miracle money cannot happen here? Don't allow your doubt to keep you in a corner. No. We are living in the last days. The days of the supernatural. The days when God has poured out his spirit on all flesh. Saying that anything is impossible is an insult to God's pedigree over time. And the Bible says as the son of man prophesied, bones came. To, ah, I wish I was in that valley. When I get to heaven, I'll ask God to take me back to that scene. I want to watch it. Dry bones. Have you been to an anatomy lab before? Or where else do you get? Oh, okay, maybe biology lab. 
That one is not a real bone now. Have you seen a dry bone before? A, a dead dry bone, real human bone. Actually, in your bone is something they call marrow. Right? You know it, ba? How do you know it? You used to, you used to deal with biscuit bones, ba? Some of you don't end the fight with the meat alone. You go straight to the bones. You are Ezekiel part two. Amen. May God so bless you. You don't have time for bones. Amen. Amen. Those days when we're growing, when there's no money to buy meat, they'll buy biscuit bones. How many of you did that? Ah, you didn't? Oh, God of mercy. They say it, it's highly nutritious. It has calcium and protein. Amen. And some of you were so you were so skillful. In fact, you were your Jesse is number nine in in, in, in destroying and 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 and, uh, and 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 dissecting and dismantling bones. You can so destroy that bone that if the bone was in the valley of Ezekiel, it can't even come together. Again. Shout hallelujah. Amen. And the Bible says bones. I believe that's the reason why God is in the business of working signs and wonders in the last days. You know, the Bible says in Joel chapter 2, it says, and I will show signs and wonders in the heavens above in those days. Because when we read the story of Ezekiel, it's easy for many believers not to believe. So God has to do a repeat of those days again. This time around, it may not be dead, dry bones in the valley, but it may be a dislocated bone in somebody, like what happened in last miracle service. Dislocated bone in the shoulder, joined together in one service. You don't believe it. The video is on YouTube. Go and watch it. For those of you who are here for the first time, you are welcome. Oh. You will see where we're well today. Oh. Whatever they told you before you came, they didn't lie. You will see even more than what they told you. Think of it. Dislocated. Do you know what it means for a book? How many weeks that guy will stay with? I know one of our sisters who had a broken shoulder from an accident. I know how many months she stayed in the orthopedic ward till she became landlady. You know, everybody has gone and left you. New set of people come and meet you. You now become the prefect, the house, the. And then in one service, they. It, it was so, the miracle was so spot on that I found it difficult to believe. The way he was moving his shoulder, I said, my goodness, this is God, the God as of the days of Ezekiel. That's why I like that song that says, these are the days of Ezekiel. Dry bones becoming. If he can make dry bones to live. There's nothing that God cannot do. And so I want you tonight to believe God beyond everything you have ever seen. As a matter of fact, I want you to stretch your faith to a point where you are trusting to see what you have never seen before. That you give God permission to surprise you. That you right now as you are there seated, you are sending a text to somebody, a loved one away. I say, brother, sister, you need to connect to this service right now. I know what is about to happen for you. Because God is alive. And there is nothing he cannot do. In Jeremiah 27, verse 27 and then verse 17. So that you can understand. He says, behold, 32 verse 27. He says, I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard? For me to do this is God asking a question sometimes when God asks questions like this is maybe because his people have doubted him to a point where it's almost becoming an insult he said I am the God of all flesh the flesh of humans the flesh of animals is there anything too hard for me to do verse 17 is the answer the prophet says behold thou has made the heavens and the earth with your great power and your stretched out arms and there is nothing. Somebody said there is nothing. Absolutely nothing. Too hard for him to do. 
nothing too hard for him. There is nothing you cannot do. There's no mountain you cannot move. If you have said it, then you will. You have a track record of king. You're not about to stop. There's nothing you cannot do. There is nothing. There's no mountain. If you have said it, you will do it. You will do it. You have a track record of do you think that he cannot do? You forget about what has delayed. That's why I started by telling you that as far as this service is concerned, delay is going to be history. Because the God you serve never arrives late. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God created time. There's nothing like late in his dictionary. How can the one that created time come late? No. Even if he came late, time will adjust to ensure he came on time. A God that is not limited by time. Second Kings chapter 4. The Bible spoke about the Shunammite woman. Wonderful woman. Blessing the man of God, Elisha. And then Elisha called her one day and said, Come, what will I do for you? Do you want me to talk to the king or to the commander of the army? The woman said, I'm a, I'm a blessed woman. No? Then the servant said, She doesn't have a child. Now, I went back to study from a historical perspective. It's not written in the Bible. But I went to search history, Bible history on that very passage. And it was calculated that the woman, the Shunammite woman, had the same case with the man that Jesus met at the pool of Bethesda. The similarity was that both of them had a 38-year condition. That's why the Bible says in 2 Kings chapter 4 that the woman and her husband were very old. 38 years, no child. So is it barrenness that is your issue? You heard the testimony, six years. Do you know whether they had tried IVF? Do you know whether they had tried all kinds of method and it failed? Six years and God shows up just by a word. Not like the woman came for this service. The woman is somewhere and a word came through her sister. There is nothing you cannot do. There's no mountain you cannot move. If you have said it, then you will do it. There is nothing. There is nothing you cannot do. This is the part I love the most. There's no mountain you cannot If you have said it. There's nothing too hard for my God. You have to believe it. That's why the Bible says, for this is the confidence, the boldness, the courage that we have in him. That whatever we ask according to his will, you are not afraid of what you are asking because you know whatever is capable. Is capable. You take your phone now and text, send a text to your family members. Brethren, God is not yet late. Yes. Send it to that person who has already given up. That lady who is already 40, 40 something, and she's not married. Oh, yeah. You know, sometimes when I prophesy miracles to people, I see the way they laugh and look at me. But I know how the story always ends. I know who laughs last. The young man brought results and paper, everything. I threw the paper away. I, I hit him on his belly. 
I say you are fine in the name of Jesus. Go back and get tested. As if I'm the one that manufactured the testing machines. For with men, it is impossible. But not with God. For with God. How many things? How many things? So rearrange your prayer request now. I, I believe you must have written your prayer request. Rearrange it again. Because some of you, there are some things you didn't put there. You kept it aside and said, me, I'll just bother about this one. Write it there. Yeah, let me share a very funny story now. Don't laugh at me, but it just shows you how God can do the impossible. Now, I'm somebody who likes plantain a lot. And um, I didn't say I love plantain. I say I like plantain. Are you hearing me? Uh, so I can still refuse it. Okay? But I like plantain a lot. As a matter of fact, if I see any rice without plantain, that food is naked. It doesn't wear... You know when they say food, wear skirt and blouse? May your food start wearing skirt and blouse. <laughs> Amen. Some of you, your food is wearing gown. You know what gown is? At least egg, egg. Let's boil egg and put on top. Amen. One of the things I was so believing God for this miracle service, and for some weeks now, probably more than a month now, I've not been able to eat plantains because there are no plantains in town. And I was this close to just traveling somewhere and uprooting a plantain tree and coming to... So while I was praying and preparing for the miracle service, I asked God for plantain. And the chef preparing my food today said, we got plantain. <laughs> Amen. Now you can laugh about that and say, well, that looks too. But I'm just showing you God that can manipulate. If God is so concerned about my plantain, that will not give him glory. How much more the miracle is about to do in your life? Not when he knows that his glory is at stake. God knows that when he does it, everybody will turn and glorify him. And you think he will play games with you? You think he will play? You, you serve a God that is mighty and alive. You serve a God that is not dead, but a God that is alive. A God that is able to do exceeding abundantly, far above all you can ask of him, according to his power. That is at work. Let me tell you, it's a bargain. God knows that the workings of his power in your life today will bring him glory. And you think he will play with that kind of business deal? No. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. And do what? And you think God, God loves anything that brings him glory. That's why he created you. Not to be weak and beggarly, but so that your rising, your excellence, your brilliance, your greatness can bring him glory. And you think God will joke with that bargain? When it comes to the act of miracle signs and wonders, God does not joke. Are you hearing me? If he says it, he's committed to do it. He's the only personality in the universe that honors his word more than his name. You know what it means? It means that God obeys his own word. Just because he has said it, he will do it. He says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return void. But shall prosper in the thing which I please, and accomplish the thing which I sent it. Tonight, all I'm going to do is partner with God and begin to release prophetic words over our lives. As we stand up to pray in a short moment. And by the speakings of the words of Yeshua. I want you to watch the way doors will open hither and thither. Anybody can speak and the door remains closed. Not when Yeshua speaks. He says, I am the door. Huh? I am the way. Almost as if everything that is, everything that is on earth, living and non-living thing, has a capacity in them to respond to the speakings of Elohim. And tonight he's about to speak over that chaos in your family and bring peace. He's about to speak over that lack, that poverty, that want 
and bring unusual abundance. For some of you, he's about to lift you to the pinnacle of your career. The Bible says that he caused them to ride upon the high places of the head and to suck honey out of the rock. In Habakkuk 3 verse 19, he said, The Lord shall make my feet like the feet of a deer and set me upon my high places. Not only will he give you speed, he will elevate you. So you are not just running with speed, you are running on another level. That's what God is about to do. Believe it. You just believe it. Forget about what is around you. God does not need the raw material from any man to create a miracle. All he needs is your faith. That's all he needs. My prayer tonight is that God will not pass by anyone here. Even in a place or an area of our life where we still seem to entertain doubt, may God show us mercy today. God is never late. He was never late for Abraham and Sarah. Genesis 21 verse 1 to 3, the Bible says, And the Lord visited Sarah according to the time of life. Verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah according to the time of life. And the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken. Even at 90, give birth to children. Abraham, a hundred. His, the Bible says his body was completely dead. I don't know if you can still produce sperm by 100. But that's the God that we serve. It was never late for Anna. Every time they went to Shiloh, the other wife of, 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 of Eli, of, what's his name again? Elimelech now, is that his name? Elimelech or what? Elkanah. Will always mock at her. Mock at her. Just the way some of us have been stylishly mocked by some colleagues, by some friends. You know, there's a way you can stylishly mock a person. Imagine when you are among a league of friends. Everybody's getting married and you, you, you there's no boy around. If you're not careful, there's a way they will yab you. You know what I'm saying? Or you are in a house where everybody's getting married and you are just there. Perhaps your younger ones. And then your mother will say, when are you bringing our grandchildren? As if you don't have grandchildren already. You try to complain and say, hey, when you go to your house, do what you want. You know what they are trying to tell you? When are you leaving? But the God that we serve is not late. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's not late. If it delayed, it was because he was busy preparing a grand celebration for you. A man of God once said that the reason why God may seem to arrive late is because he wants your story to be the latest. Mm -hmm. And here was how God did it for Anna. He gave her Samuel. After Samuel, he gave her five more children. You know, if it had ended with Samuel, they say this one is by mistake somehow. Maybe God just saw, but after five more children, I hear what I'm saying. Pastor Henry, I see a door opening for you in this season. Yeah. Between now to ending August and September, I see a door opening for you. Hallelujah. And I decree and declare over your life any door that has been shut. Ah! Every door that has been shut against you, every door shut against your progress, I stand by the rod of a high priesthood and I command that because you came for this service, those doors are opening now. They are opening now. In the name of Jesus. be miracles today oh. I'm telling you I know what I'm seeing I'm telling you you have to believe me you have seen it before I know what I'm seeing hey I see doors opening that's what I'm seeing I'm seeing doors opening my God don't let anybody deceive you to think you have been stagnated no 
You were just waiting to be elevated. It was not stagnation. It was just a step, a setup for your elevation. Tonight is that night where every door that was shut must open for you. I'm telling you, must open. Must open. It said, Thus said he that had the key of David, Revelation 3, verse 7. Thus said he that had the key of David that opens and no man shuts. I'm a calabiser. I'm telling you, I see doors opening. Strange, strange open doors. The kind of testimonies you hear after today. Eh? Some of you think God has forgotten you. No, no, no. He prepared for June. Yeah, he prepared you for June. I'm telling you, he didn't. For some, it was February. For some, March, April, May. But for you, he prepared you for June. I tell you, he prepared your visitation in the month of June. The Bible says, in an appointed time, in a certain place, I have heard you. He said, behold, now is the appointed time. I declare that this night, tonight is your night. And this season is your time. In the name of Jesus. Are you ready to pray? I wanted to go on and on in my message, but there's no need again. I think we can stop here. Believe me, oh, I'm not just making noise. Believe me. Believe me. If you didn't come with an expectation, start creating one now. I'm telling you. I know the God we serve. We've seen him do miracles. We've seen him do signs and wonders. We've seen him interrupt the program of men to favor us. The Bible says you took us through fire and through water, but now you have brought us to the wealthy place. That's the kind of God that we serve. What is that cause in your family? What is that transgenerational pattern, that yoke, that bondage? Not when the king of glory is about to ride in your life. The God that at the blast of his nostrils, mountains will begin to skip like ram. Then what kind of chain will become too strong that cannot be broken tonight? That's the God we serve. And tonight, I'm praying not only that God will do a miracle, but hear me. I'm praying that God will bring a total upgrade in our lives. That at the end of everything that God will do today, somebody will come to a point in their work with God and say, henceforth, I will never doubt the power of God in my life. Yes. Yes. That even if one month after now you find yourself in a terrible situation, you will begin to break forth with praise because of what you have seen him before. Do. The Bible says Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, Good thing about the God we serve is he didn't borrow his power. His power is always with him. Once has he spoken, twice have I heard that what belongs to who? He's a God of miracles. He's a God of signs and wonders. He's the great I am that I am. There's nothing he cannot do. There is nothing you cannot do. There's no mountain you cannot. If you have said it, do it. you have a track record keeping your word. You're not
open your mouth and just begin to thank him in advance. I want you to thank him as though it is done. Thank him as though the miracles are here. Thank him by the eyes of faith. What you see him already doing. What you see that he has done and what he's about to do. Come on, come on, open your mouth. Come on, come on, come on. Thank him for that breakthrough. Thank him for that job. Thank him for that open door. Thank him for that testimony. Thank him for miracle marriages. Thank you for miracle healings. changing the policy statements of companies, of organizations just to favor your cause. Hear me? There's somebody I've seen here. You are going to get a call from an organization that had turned you down. Wait. It's a very prophetic service. They had declined you because they accepted another person. But they will call you and say, due to so, 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 so reasons, please, we are calling you back to accept our offer. And God said it's happening in the month of June for you. And I'm saying for another person, I see a reshufflement in your office so that you can be promoted. That's what I'm saying. Yes. What a mighty God we serve. Listen, if he has said it, that's the end. Though. You don't go home and try to bother about how he will do it. If he has said it, that is just it. The same God that can deliver 18 years alcohol addiction, liver and kidney affliction, what is it that he cannot do? ready tonight what a mighty God we serve wave your hands and give him praise you deserve the glory and 
open to hear us when we call. In Isaiah 65 verse 24 it says it shall come to pass that before they call I will answer. Are you ready to pray tonight? Let me say it ahead of our prayers that every prayer raised here tonight will be answered by my God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Proverbs chapter 16, we are going to pray some prayers and then I'm going to start ministering to us as the Spirit leads. Proverbs 16, verse 15. Proverbs 16, verse 15. We are going to pray a strange prayer for favor like you have. And I want you, listen, when we are praying, I want you to pray like you are the only one in this hall. Forget about who is around you and I want you to cry to God. You may not pray for yourself. Maybe you are praying, standing in the gap for your loved ones, your family members, your friends, your colleague in the office, your spouse, your children. There is someone tonight that will be affected by your obedience and by your cooperation in the presence of God. Proverbs 16 verse 15. We are going to cry for the favor of God to rest upon our life. It says, in the light of the king's face is life and his favor is like what? a cloud of the latter rain that the favor of God will fall on your life like rain in this season is what you are about to cry to God for you know when rain falls it falls on every grass of the field no one is spared everyone becomes soaked by the rain and the Bible says the favor of the king is like the cloud of the latter rain 
it means it falls very heavy. You are going to cry and say, oh Lord God, let your reign of favor fall upon my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to open your mouth and cry to God. Let your reign of favor fall on my life. Fall on my life. Fall on my life. Somebody's praying. Don't be quiet. Lift your voice and pray. 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 Lift your Lift your voice and pray. 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 Lift your Verse 16. Psalms 81, verse 16. We are still praying. And somehow it looks like we'll be praying and doing some other things at the same time. Is there somebody with the name Patricia? Patricia. I don't know whether you are here or you are online. But I'm hearing the name Patricia. And there's a door that is about to open for Patricia and her family. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wherever you are, where you are, I speak to you, whether online or here in this place. Every door that has been designed by Elohim to open for you and for your family. Door of announcement. Door of satisfaction. I command that door to open now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Is that somebody here? You have a twin. You are a twin. Huh? You have a twin sibling. Where are you? You have a twin. You have a twin. You are a twin. You have a twin. Clap for Jesus. All of you too. All of you too. You have a twin. Is he a, a girl? Me. A male, yes, sir. 
A female? A male. A male. A male. I'm looking for a female. A twin. I think that's what I'm looking for. A female. A twin that is a female. Who are you? I'll pray for all of you, but yes, sir. let me know. A huh? female twin. Your female is a twin. Yes, sir. Let me pray for you, huh? God is about to do something mighty. Are you hearing me? This twin, I don't know why, is her complexion lighter than yours. She's lighter in complexion than you. Yes, sir. Good. Because when this lady came out, look at this lady. When this lady came out, I was seeing the face of that girl as though it was like this lady in complexion. Huh? Yes, sir. Like this complexion? Yes, sir. You are sure? Like yes, this complexion? Yes, sir. That for Jesus. God. Ah, the prophetic, the way it works, eh? When I finished praying about Patricia, God now said, if, if you have a twin who is called Patricia, what will be the name of the other one? I say, Patrick. It's okay. There's somebody who is a twin here that I want to visit. Lift your hands, sir. Now, look at me. I see a grace for elevation. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. A grace for elevation. God is about to elevate the both of you. Yes, sir. It will come on you and it will come on her. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. God said you have both stepped into a season for exploits. Amen. That's what I'm hearing. And in the name of Jesus I give the grace for announcement to rest upon both your lives. Amen. Where is this girl? Where is she? At home. Where? Where is home? Meduguri here. Yeah, in Meduguri. Yes, sir. Hmm. What does she do? She she work in one organization. As she's a, she's working class. Yes. Okay, that's what I wanted to hear. Now, this is what God is saying in the realm of the spirit. I see a grace for elevation coming on her. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. I see two things happening. She's not married. She's not She's married. married. Yes, sir. I see two things happening almost the same time. I see a bigger job opportunity coming. Amen. And I see a marriage. And hear, hear what I'm telling you. She's going to leave Meduguri. That's what I'm seeing. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. She's going to leave Meduguri. Be it unto you and unto her according to your faith. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All of you have twin. Twin sister. Twin sister as well. Where is your twin sister? Joss. Huh? Joss. She's in Joss. Is she married? No. What is she doing now? She's currently working in the hospital. She's working in the hospital. Wait, why am I? I'm seeing somebody who is like a bit chubbier than you. Huh? Yeah. She's fatter yeah. than you, right? Yeah. Uh huh. Not much. Huh? Not much. Not, yeah, not much, but a bit fatter than you. I want you to take your phone right now and call her and tell her and say, God said that this is a season of remembrance. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Let me leave. I, I would have gone further, but let me stop there. Let me stop there. There will be three successive miracles that will happen for her. Amen. Are you hearing me? Let me just stop there. One of them will be a change of status. I leave you to go and discern the remaining. Okay. But tell her that the Lord said, this is a season for remembrance. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, I pray for all of you that are in front that have twin, twin siblings, sisters or brothers. I declare in the name of Jesus, let this be their season of remembrance. And in remembrance, may they experience divine visitation. That because you came here, may God stretch forth his hand towards them and visit them this season. Visit them this season. In the name of Jesus Christ. It is done. Go back to your seat rejoicing. Tell them to expect good news. Good news.
good news. Good news. Good news. There's somebody you go to a church. Your church, the name of your church is Good News. Come. You are dark in complexion. Good news. Where are you? You are dark in complexion. You are a male. That's what I'm saying. Where are you? Huh? Huh? Can you clap for Jesus for goodness sake? I'm hearing the name of a sibling like Abel. Abel. Like a sibling or a cousin. Abel. 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 Where are you? Abel. Abel. You have a sibling or a cousin. Okay, there's another person is a friend. Abel. Abel. Come quickly. There's a word for that person. Sometimes you wish you can also interact with those who are online. This is David, right? Ah, David, yes, how sir. are you? I'm Longest fine, sir. time. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Amen. David, God is going to give your family good news. Thank you, sir. And I want to pray and avert. I want to pray and avert death. All right. Is your mother alive? Yes, sir. Your mother is alive. Yes, sir. Your wife's mother is she alive? Yes, sir. Good. I don't know which of them, but I see the devil wanting to attack one of them with sickness. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I see an attack of sickness that was to come on one of them. But you don't even know whether the person is sick now or not. But it's, a, God, huh? it's a confirmation, sir. Who? Which of them? My mom. Your mom yes, is sir. sick right now. No. Uh, last month, I had a dream that she had four years to live. You had a dream that she has four years to live. Yes. Okay, I put two be in front of that four. Yes, sir. And also... Did you hear what I said? Yes, sir. I said I put two in front of the four, which is what? <laughs> and let's, let's start from there. Then go ahead. Then last week, my younger sister called me. Her wedding is coming December. She said that she also had a dream that our mother died. Now, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for your wife. And I'm praying for anyone that is here. That in the name of Hasakata Kata 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 Kata. Wait. Who is here? Your mother's name is Patience. 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 I need to pray for you. You are a woman, the way I'm seeing you. I need to connect you to this person. Your mother's name is Patience. In fact, this is a prayer that I would have done quite a while now. Patience. Your mother's name is Patience. There's a connection with David. Yes, sir. Her huh? mother's name. Your mother's name. Yes, sir. Your mother's name is Patience. Yes, sir. She's currently sick. She's sick. Yes, sir. It's turning on. I like it now. It's turning on. I pray for the two of them. Are you? Let, 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 wait. Just listen. Forget about this. Whatever they have told you. Eh? prophecy brought you out to rearrange what is happening I speak to the both of you and I connect to anyone whose parents here are sick or who has an attack of death around their life by the blood of the eternal covenant we cancel death from their life I say we cancel death from their life I declare that they will live in 10 more years 20 more years, 30 more years I extend your life by the mercies of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Clap your hands and give Jesus praise. You can return back to your seat. It is done. Hear me? And David, what did I say? You say, I got, I got it very well. I said, we will hear good news. Now, he Amen. said his sister is getting married. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. you will hear good news. Amen. Not only that wedding, you will hear good news. Amen. Many things about God says, don't even worry, don't bother about what you are doing. Are you hearing me? Well, let me even let me pray for your finance. I see that you have been stuck in a place for a while. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. And the breakthrough you are trusting God for. 
has been released into your life today. Amen. God is going to start shifting things in your favor. Amen. I don't know where you are now, but get ready. I see another job opportunity coming into your hand. Amen. Amen. And wait, oh, why do I see you also venturing out like, like you want to do something on your own, like a business or something? That's, that's has always been my desire. Sir. Huh? That has always been my desire. All right. The job comes first before the business. Yes, sir. So that you can gather enough capital for the business. Yes, are you hearing me? Yes, sir. And I'm seeing that that business you are going to kickstart it within the ember months. That's what God says. I prophesy that this is your season I of good news. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm not done with you, sir. Who is. Um, Do you know anybody like, is it Miriam or Mariam? Miriam or Mariam or Miriam or Mariam or Miriam or something like that. Do you, have, do you know somebody with that name? Mary is my cousin sister. Your cousin sister? Yes, sir. Toba Shakabala. Hear me? I see the Lord stretching out his hand towards her. Yes, sir. Amen. I don't know what it is, but God says the pattern and the satanic cycle has been broken. Amen. Amen. And this season, there is going to be a release. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Return back to your seat rejoicing. Are you ready to pray? Are you ready to pray? Yes, why are they? Papa, sir, Abel is our friend. Abel is his uncle. Abel is your uncle. Yeah. Okay, that didn't look like what I was looking for. But it's okay. I'll still pray for you, people. Abel is your friend. Huh? Your cousin is Abel. Hey, hey, I say you, you have a sibling or a cousin who is Abel. <laughs> now, my God. This Abel, does he have a family of his own? No, he's in India, Tamafo. He's in India now. Oh, This is your Abel. Is he walking? He's walking. Where does he walk? Is in Kaduna. Where is NDA? Kaduna. The reason why I want to do this, there's a connection. All right? So I'm just trying to dig it out because I want to prophesy to you about Abel consigning his job, his career. Are you hearing me? And God is saying there's a connection with this guy. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I know you have an uncle who was uh, a military, who is a military general, I don't know. Yes, sir. But, but there's a grace that will come on that Abel. He's going to be the next in line, like that's your uncle. Amen. God will raise him as high as that's your uncle. Are you hearing Amen. what I'm saying? Amen. And I see God breaking by his mercies. I see the mercy of God breaking a pattern in the family that Abel comes from. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. So that when he graduates and becomes commissioned as an officer, there are certain patterns that will no longer find expression in his life. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, Abel is walking in Kaduna. I see the grace of God coming on Abel. I see them taking Abel to become head over something. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Just tell him whether he believes it or not. Who we'll knows who has the last, last laugh? Are you hearing me? I see them take Abel from where he is and make him the head over something. And this head will make him begin to travel. That's what I'm saying. And I see God in one year shifting his finances hey, for good. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
now this is what you do for me before you go back to your seat. You tell him everything and then tell him that when God starts blessing him, he should not forget you. Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Otherwise, he will go back to where he was. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So I pray that this, your Abel, is good to you as a friend. Oh. Amen. Amen. What kind of friend? Pray. Okay. Wait, calm down now. Calm down. What's that song Pastor Prince will raise that the uh, at the concert? The first song is that Marvelous. One Greatest. Please give him the mic, let him sing. Marvelous, marvelous I that song? of your hand. like this one I'm prophesying. It's to help me here. So I need you guys to be sharp. I'm not singing because I just want to sing. I'm not here. I'm, I'm in another realm now. There's a tribal name that I'm trying to pull out from the realm of the spirit. Amen. God will visit you tonight. Are we ready to pray? Psalms 81, the last verse. Abel is your uncle. Is he an elderly person? Yes, sir. Tell him that I said he will not die. Amen. I didn't guess. I just told you that this is it, isn't it? Yes, sir. Good. Black like you, ba? Yes, sir. The black, I say dark or black. <laughs> Say, don't call me black, I'm dark. It's the same thing. Amen. Amen. Black and dark. Amen. Go and tell him that the Lord said he shall not die. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I see God arranging something for him that will make him smile. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. God is giving him extra years and God will make him smile. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Return back to your seat rejoicing. I thought you clap better for Jesus. Psalms 81. Who is Sophia? Sophia. Or Sophie or Sophia. Sophia. Oh, I know this one. And this one is a worker. Let me be sure. Is there any other person with that name? No, okay. You'll be shocked in this one. Where is your mother, your biological mother? The village. She's in the village. Yes, sir. She's the one I want to talk to. I want to talk to you about her. Are you hearing me? I know you stay here, all right? But the person you are living with is not your mother. Good. So I want to talk to that woman. I'm seeing a woman crying. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And I see God wiping the tears off her eyes. Amen. I don't know, but I'm seeing somebody who is not educated, like not learned. Huh? That is her. Don't be ashamed, okay? Don't be ashamed, okay? But you see, if I don't go this deep, some of them up till now, they still think I'm playing fraud. Some of you, you have watched all those bloggers to say, this is not Professor Dinlipatu. 
this is not uh, what's it? Me or Kuku Sheshe or Abido Sheka. No. This is real time. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. Some of you are still looking at me and saying, uh-huh, uh-huh. it's like them. Are you that is looking? Oh, I can't do one now. Amen. So I'm sorry that I'm going deep, but if I don't go like that, they will not see the way they are looking at me like this. Amen. There's no need to go to me or Kuku Sheshe. No. Listen. Power belongs to God. He said, freely you have received. Me or Kuku Sheshe will say, do this and that. God gives you freely. Are you hearing me? I'm going to pray for I'm going to pray for that impartation of the prophetic much later. Amen. I saw a woman who is like your color. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Like your complexion. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. That's true. Yes, sir. Anyone that is not true, see, is not true. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Yeah. And I saw her crying. And I see God about to wipe the tears of her eyes. Amen. It looked to me like the reason why she's crying is connected to her children. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So it looks like why is there nobody good? Or why is there nobody who has risen or somebody who is great or something like that? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. God is wiping her tears. Amen. Now, this one I will tell you is not prophecy. This is me telling you that if God is talking to you about your mother, that God is about to change that order, it means that God will begin with you. Amen. This one is not prophecy. This one is me now. Are you hearing me? And I'm also seeing she has a problem with her eyes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I don't know if it's one of her eyes or both eyes. I see that she has a problem with her eyes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. God is going to heal her eyes, not only her eyes, her body. Amen. God is going to heal her body completely. Amen. And there is a grace coming on all her children. Amen. So that everything that seems to bury their destiny, <laughs> let their destinies be uprooted to light Amen. this season. Anything that has covered the destiny of anyone here, or anyone connected to you in the name of Jesus Christ we declare let your destiny break forth now let it break forth now in the name of Jesus Christ do you believe it yes, sir. go back to your seat rejoicing clap your hands and give Jesus praise Psalms 81 the last verse verse 16 we are going to pray are you ready to pray? I can't hear you. He said, he would have fed them also with the finest of wheat. And here's the prayer point. And with honey from the rock, I would have satisfied them. Honey means sweetness. God is about to make somebody's life sweet. Hear me. You are going to cry to God and say, oh God, every bitter situation in my life, all need to become sweet in this season. Do you understand the prayer? I want you to raise your voice and pray like you have lost your mind. Every bitter situation in my life turn it to become sweet again. I can't hear you. Somebody's already tired. This is miracle service. God is changing lives. God is changing destinies. Honey 
let your life be satisfied with honey. May God add sweetness to your life. Mighty name we pray. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27. We are praying again. Please, I don't want you to be tired. This is a destiny defining service. Are you hearing me? You need strength to break forth. Okay? After the service, you can go home and rest. I'm very sure there are people following online now who are on their feet till the end of this service. So when we are praying, please, if you are not sick, make sure you are standing, okay? God is about to do something in somebody's family. I said God is about to do something in somebody's family. You thought I was, I, I'm actually prophesying. I said God is about to do something in somebody's family. There's a person here. I see money that is owed your family. I don't know who is owed, whether your father or your mother. I feel is your father strongly. But I see that money is about to be released. I don't know where you are, but I see that money is about to be released. And in the name of Jesus, I want to prophesy. Anyone that is here whose family breakthrough has been delayed because you came for this service. Is it you? Is you? Money is owed your family. What kind of money? What's that? My father's in pension. Eh? Your father's pension. Pension, yes, sir. Pen Can you clap for Jesus, please? I say I feel this your father. Huh? Let me use. It's not the only one. So I'm using you to connect to many other people. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm not talking about July or August. This June. I don't care the protocol that is ahead. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let it be paid in the month of June. I release that money in the name of the month of June. In the name of Jesus Christ. I say release that breakthrough in the month of truth. In the name of Jesus. It is done in the name of Jesus Christ. My dear, come. You just come and shake my hand. It is done. In the name of Jesus. Now I prophesy breakthroughs over your life and your family. Every door that is shut, open in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. All of you return back to your seat. It is done. This June, you will hear good news. Somebody who is claiming that prophecy from themselves will clap better. This is a prophetic service, I tell you. Isaiah 10, 27. That lady with glasses and black scarf. Where, that lady there. Can I talk to you? Can I pray for you? Yes. Black scarf with glasses. You know yourself. Just come. Please. Come quickly. No, not this one. That one. That one. Yes, that one. Let me see who the person is. Swell. Have we met before? Yes. Okay, last, uh, last two weeks. Last two weeks on the line, right? Uh huh. I want you to lift your hands, please. The Lord said He's bringing comfort Amen. to you and to your family. Amen. Now, listen, look at me. Let them not think that we arranged anything. You told me that you would see me, right? Yes. We said after your exam, we'll see. Yeah. Have we seen? No. Okay. So I'm telling you, God says he's bringing comfort to you in this season. Amen. And to your family. Amen. And hear me. I see a paper. 
and I see several needs and requests written on it. Are you hearing me? And then I see the Lord took a pen and he was sticking everything on that paper. Amen. God said for your family, this is the season of answered prayers. Amen. Let me use that to connect to somebody. Remember I told you, this service, wait till the end. Because you don't know when your word will come. Let it be a season of answered prayer for your family. I said, let it be a season of answered prayer for your family. In the name of Jesus. God is comforting you. Amen. Are you hearing me? At the same time, let me give you more prophetic words. God is bringing comfort to you and to your family. I see God bringing answers to your family. Amen. You are lifting your two hands. Huh? I don't know why, but I see the Lord putting a ring on that finger. Amen. Let me be sure. Let me be sure. Are you married? No. I see God putting a ring on your finger. Amen. Wait, just wait. Can I touch you? Do you believe this? Sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Did we discuss this? No. Okay. God is putting a ring on your finger. Amen. I hope you'll not be embarrassed by what, by what I'm about to say. No, sir. He doesn't even know what I'm about to say. But I see God removing something that looks like a ring from your finger. Hmm? Amen. There's a spirit that has blocked your marital settlement. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I will not go into details but I'm seeing certain kinds of dreams. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. These dreams come momentarily. And whenever you have these dreams, you are always sad. Yes, sir. All right? Yes, sir. Let me stop there. This is a covenant with the spirit. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. That God is breaking today. Amen. I hope you are not embarrassed. No, sir. Because I'm seeing that you should have settled down before now. That's not the only thing God wants to do for you. Alright? There are many things God will do. Remember I said God is bringing you comfort. That's how I started it. Yeah. Good. But you should have settled down before now. But there is... Every time there's this kind of struggle. There's this kind of... It's as if you are fighting something. Every time that issue comes up. It looks like you are fighting a force because everything begins to work the opposite. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. All of a sudden, you begin to quarrel with people or people just walk away and all of that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Is that true? Yes, sir. But God is canceling. I'm saying it's because of these spirits. There's a covenant unknown to you with a spirit from the waters. But in the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands to you. And I override and destroy that covenant today. Amen. By the power of the eternal blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary. Mm. Let every covenant that has brought delay, I'm using as a point of contact to any other person here. Every covenant that has brought satanic restrictions into your life. By the power of the blood of Jesus, let those covenants be destroyed now. Let those covenants be destroyed now. Be destroyed now. Be destroyed now. In the name of Jesus Christ. It is done. Congratulations. This is your season of comfort. Of settlement. Amen. Hear me. And I even see God blessing you in the area of finance and career. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Where do you work? Huh? Dikwa. Dikwa? Yes. Okay, that's your field. Do you have a car? No. Good. Because God is about to give you a car. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. It is done. Amen. It is done. Return back to your seat rejoicing. Ay, 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 ay. 
Glory be to God. Ay, 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 ay. Glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Verse 27, last prayer. I wish we could pray more, but there's no time again. No? I want to minister to some people. Isaiah 10, 27. One prayer from this scripture and I'll begin to minister. It shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulder. Ah, I thought you shout a loud amen. And his yoke from your neck. And the Bible says, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing oil. Hear me? Yes, your prayer. Oh God, by the power of the anointing in this place, every ugly situation in my life be lifted and be destroyed. Open your mouth and cry to God. Every ugly situation, every ugly cycle in my life, by the power of the anointing. Come on, I can hear you lift your voice up. over our lives and I want you to believe every word that will be spoken who is lucky 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 and then there's somebody your brother's name is lucky but who is lucky 
Lucky. Name or son name. Quickly, please run. Who is Lucky? I want to pray and speak over our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. My God, there's a strong atmosphere of the power of God here. Glory be to God. I want to pray. God said I should announce miracle babies. Miracle babies are reigning in this place. It's raining miracle babies in this place. Right now, I speak to every barren womb. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, by the God that has given us testimonies here, I declare to every barren womb, be fruitful now. Be fruitful now. Be fruitful now. In the name of Jesus. Miracle babies are reigning in this place. They are reigning in this place. Get ready for unusual, ear deafening, eye scratching kinds of testimonies. How about six years, no issue, and now I'm pregnant? I hope you have not forgotten the testimony of that doctor. Nine years. Have you forgotten? You have forgotten so soon. Abba. If I don't serve this God, I don't know who else I will serve. What has he not done? And what can he not do? So I'll rather wait for him. Who is lucky? Lucky is his mother and her brother. Brother. And you? His mother. Your mother's name is Lucky. Have you seen that? Ah. Hey, 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 hey. Shahabataya. Now I'm about to change that name because of what God is about to do. This is um, Brother Timothy's wife. I've not prophesied to you before. Let me prophesy now. This is your Lucky. You say it's your brother. Like the elder brother, yes, sir. Elder brother, okay. Yes, sir. So I know who I'm talking about. This is supposed to be the person with the most promising destiny. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Because it will start happening from now. Yeah. You know, I saw something in the spirit. It's like I was looking through a glass, huh? Like a window. I could see somebody at the other side, but I, I know there was somebody at the other side, but I couldn't see the face of the person very well because the mirror is blur. And then I saw somebody come with water and with a rag and he cleaned the window and I could see the face of that person. That's what God is doing to Lucky's destiny. Amen. Everything that has enshrouded his destiny, it tears open to Hey! I don't know what luck he does. I don't know where he walks. But I see God connecting him with a political figure. Amen. I see God I see God connecting him with government. Amen. Government. Are Amen. you hearing me? Where does he walk? He, he, he walks with um, ISS. What's ISS? State Security Service. Is that not in the government? Yes, sir. Clap your hands for Jesus. <laughs> I see God, and I said I see God connecting him with somebody in government, a politician. So this will be like, uh, probably you go and be in charge of, you know, those people, they are like uh, oddly to certain protect. And this is somebody that is going to be a high-ranking person. Amen. And God is going to make this person naturally favorable to Lucky. Amen. To a point where it will be dashing money, dashing in money every time. Amen. And that is how God will raise Lucky. And in less than five years, I see Lucky finish building a house. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Return back with that testimony, rejoicing. Tell him what God has said he will do. If he doesn't believe, when it happens, we will share his salary into two. 
Abi? Amen. Your mother's name is Lucky. No. Leba Kasaya. Please stand on your feet. I want to pray for you. Abashadabaka. I know God is mercy, full and kind, faithful and gracious. And the apple of his eyes, the stuff that fills his heart, every morning, noon, and night. He loved me well. Was patient that came out before now? Who did I prophesy about the first time? Your yes. twin sister. Like this service is for you. Amen. Sometimes some prophecies are very funny, but you just say them anyway. God said, lucky. One chance. I'm canceling one chance. I don't know what that means. God said, one chance. Canceling one chance. Are you hearing me? I'm not going to explain it. I don't know what it means. But that's just what I heard. It said lucky one chance. Canceling one chance. Whether it is one chance as in one chance vehicle. Or maybe it's one chance as in somebody has a family. Where people get opportunities only once. Huh? That cycle is over today. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I bless your mom through you. Amen. And I declare that from today, all her seed will become mighty. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And every opportunity that has been lost, let it be restored. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please lift your hands. I want to pray and make declarations. This is the part of the service I want you to really, really take serious and embrace. As I speak, the power of God is going to be released to perform and to perfect the things that I say. Someone's deliverance is about to happen. Someone's destiny is about to change. Please lift your two hands. I want to pray and make declarations over you. God said to me this afternoon when I was praying, he said, when you go, cancel the curse of bad luck. Now in the name of Jesus, every curse of bad luck, that when it is your time, that's when the opportunity has gone. That when it is your turn, that's when things have gone south. That it is when it is your turn to be favored that things become ugly. Every curse of bad luck, whether on your life, or on your family, on your lineage, I stand by the God of heaven to cancel it now. I cancel it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm still praying it again. Every cross and every mark of bad luck, you carry it around like a seal, like a mark on your forehead. It is when it's your turn. When you get to that place, 
That's when everybody starts acting funny. It is when you apply that they close the, the registration. Every time it's your turn, that's when things don't happen in a good way. I declare in the name of Jesus, it is cancelled forever. It is cancelled forever. It is cancelled forever. In the name of Jesus. Every mark of shame and failure that the enemy has crested on your life. A pakotos keteke pata. Parush kete parushka de la hasataya. Isa proteke palata harasi ataya. I release the power of God right now. Let that mark be cancelled forever. Let that mark be deleted from your life now. Let it be deleted from your life now. Let it be deleted from your life now. In the name of Jesus. I'm still praying. Please be upstanding. I'm still praying. I see spirits following people here. And because of these spirits following you, you are always experiencing a cycle of failure. A cycle of failure. Repeated failure and evil occurrence by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Please help them because I see the power of God coming on some people now. I separate you from those spirits. By the fire of the Holy Ghost, I separate you from those spirits. I divorce you from those spirits now. And I declare be delivered now. Be delivered at all cantos que te quepa. Be delivered now. In the name of Jesus. I come against spirit husbands. Spirit wives, marine spirits that are responsible for marital delay, responsible for near success syndrome, responsible for all kinds of failure, all kinds of reproach, setback, retrogression. By the blood of the eternal covenant, I divorce you from those spirits. I divorce you from those marine spirits. Spirit husband and spirit wife, I command you, go now, go now, go now, go now, in the name of Jesus. Listen, I see the fire of God going across this congregation right now. And I see a separation happening. Just lift your hands where you are. I see a separation and God is doing it by fire. Every evil covenant with any satanic spirits, whether marine spirits, whether spirits of witchcraft, ancestral spirits, whether spirits of the air, familiar spirits, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, right now, let there be a separation. Let there be a separation by fire, by fire, by fire, by fire, by fire. Let there be a separation. Let there be a separation. Let there be a separation. Let there be help them, help them there. Let there be a separation. Let there be a separation. Let there be a separation now. 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 Who is like him, lion and the lamb, sweeter on the throne? Mountains bow down and the oceans roll to the Lord of me. Hear me, I'm still praying for you. Every recurring pattern that exist in your bloodline. I'm talking about evil patterns. Patterns of misfortune. Patterns of retrogression. Patterns of delay. Patterns of evil occurrences. 
that exists in your bloodline, in your lineage, because you came here tonight by the power of the blood and the fire of the Holy Ghost, I declare in the name of Jesus, be delivered now. I declare, be delivered now. Be delivered now. Be free now. In the name of Jesus. Anyone whose destiny here has been placed under lock and key. Because that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing something like a box. A wooden box. And the Lord tells me there are people whose destinies has been placed under lock and key. In the name of Jesus Christ. By he that had the key of David that opens and no man shuts. That shuts and no man opens. Let those boxes be broken open now. Let those boxes break open now. I release your destinies now. I release your destinies now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that looks like delay around your life. Marushka brente ke bakoskete barata kaskaba. I come as a prophet sent by the, by the Lord and I speak to every situation of delay in your life in the name of Jesus it comes to an end tonight I say it comes to an end tonight be free from the spirit of delay now in the name of Jesus be free from the spirit of delay in the name of Jesus. Let the devil of delay be arrested. Be arrested. Be arrested. I see an entire family under deliverance right now. Let that demon of delay let you go now. In the name of Jesus. Let you go now. In the name of Jesus. Please put down your hands. If you are from Kaduna, lift your hands up. I want to pray for you. If you are from Kaduna, lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Just lift your hands and close your eyes. I've seen God doing a deliverance now. Right now, in the name of Jesus, every spirit of stagnation, and then by extension, anyone from this state, from this region, that is under the influence of territorial spirits, under the influence of ancestral spirits, by the power of the my God, I see the power of God moving, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I'm here to enforce your deliverance, and I declare, be delivered now, be delivered now, I speak to everyone from that territory, be delivered now, in the name of Jesus Christ, Every spirit of addiction, addiction, drunkenness, smoking, immorality, any kind, gambling, in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm stretching my hands to you right now, to everyone from the front to the back and even following online. Let every stronghold of addiction be broken right now. I'm saying it again. Let the stronghold of addiction be broken right now. Let it be broken right now. I see chains breaking off somebody's hands. Let the stronghold of addiction be broken now. Be broken now. Be broken now. In the name of Jesus. You say, he whom the Lord has set free. He who the Son of Man has set free is free indeed. I decree and declare from today, deliverance comes to your family. Deliverance comes to you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now I say to you in the name of Jesus, that may God restore everything that the enemy has stolen from you. I program restoration into your life this season. 
Restoration means what was supposed to happen yesterday, God brings it to happen today. I program restoration to your life this season. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I declare whatever the enemy has stolen from your life, restore, 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 restore in the name of Jesus. the anointing for speed come upon you. Please lift your hands very well. Let the anointing for speed, supernatural speed, in your career, in your finance, in marital settlement, in every aspect of your life, in your spiritual life, I release the anointing for speed upon your life. Receive the anointing for speed tonight. Receive the anointing for speed tonight. May the Lord make your feet like the feet of a deer. I, I declare experience speed tonight. In the name of Jesus. Lord. I'm still praying it for someone that believes. Let the anointing for speed rest upon your life. Rest upon your life. Rest upon your life. Rest upon your life in the name of Jesus. And now I say to your life from today that you will go forward ever and backward never. Every cycle of going backward ends in your life tonight. It comes to an end tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me pray for somebody that probably has been believing God before now. And maybe what you are believing God for has not yet come to pass. And you are almost losing hope. I declare in the month of June, may my God arise for you. May the God of all grace arise for you this month. May the God of all grace arise for you this month. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can we pray over our prayer points now? I give you one minute to submit your prayer requests. And if you need to write, or if you are not yet finished writing, you have one to two minutes to quickly write it and then pass it across to the usher that is having the basket by you. Let's do that quickly. We'll pray on the prayer requests and then we'll begin to round up tonight. We lift your name high. We lift your name higher. 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 We lift your name higher.
one request. Can we pray for the sick at the same time? And could you stand again? If you are sick, lay your right hand where the condition is. Whatever part of your body that ails you, please just put your right hand there and let's believe God for your instant healing. If you are following online, you can put your right hand where the condition is on your body and just stretch your hands towards your screen, either your phone, your device, or your television. God is about to heal. God is about to heal. If you are standing in for somebody, could you just lift your right hand to heaven as a sign of contact for that person? If you are standing for somebody, lift your right hand. But if you are here and you are sick, put your right hand where the condition is. If it's in a delicate part of your body that you can't touch for public reasons, please just put your right hand on your chest. Your chest is where your heart is. That is the organ that pumps blood to every part of your body. So we are, we are still in line. We are making contact by faith. There's a strong anointing for healing. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace. Thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, Thou art welcome in this place. And holy, 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 holy are you, Lord. God is already healing right now. The saints and the angels bow. We read in, worship you now. Holy, Let me pray for the sick. But before that, I saw God give somebody a job this month. I just saw a job offer. Now let's pray for the sick. Ensure you believe God with me tonight. God is about to heal. Father, I take authority in the name of Jesus against every sickness. Whatever the name is. No matter how long or short the name is. You have given us a name that is higher than every other name. And at that name, Jesus, every knee must bow. Therefore, I arrest the spirit of infirmity. I arrest the spirit of affliction. I arrest every disease right now. And in the name of Jesus, I command them, go! I command every disease in your body, go! In the name of Jesus Christ. Every pain, I declare, be healed now. Be healed now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every condition with your limbs, your upper or your lower limbs, that means your hands or your legs, I declare, be healed now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be healed in your tissues. I can't hear your amen. Be healed in your tissues. Be healed in your bones. Be healed in your organs. In the name of Jesus Christ. I see God healing someone of short-sightedness. In the name of Jesus Christ. And every eye condition I speak to you be healed now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hepatitis, go in the name of Jesus Christ. Kidney condition be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Every organ in your body that is failing, I speak life now. I speak life now. I speak life now. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
every condition with your spine, I decree and declare, be healed right now. From your upper part of your spine to your lower back, I declare, be healed right now. Lumbar spondylosis, be healed now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I see the Lord healing somebody and there will be no need for you to wear a bracelet, a brace. You know, I don't know, but it looks like this jacket that people wear at their back. I don't know what it is for, but God is healing you right now and you will no longer have need for that jacket. In the name of Jesus Christ. I see God fixing somebody's hormone, yeah. Perhaps they have said, they have, they have diagnosed you of hormonal imbalance. I command your hormones to become balanced. I command your hormones to become stable now in the name of Jesus Christ. Every kind of bleeding that is not of God, it stops right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I speak to every growth in your body that is not of God. Cancer, cyst, tumor, fibroid of any kind. I command them to dry up and disappear now. I command them to dry up and disappear now. In the name of Jesus Christ. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. I declare be healed now. I see God healing somebody on your toes. Your toenails. I see God healing you right now. I don't know what it is, but I see God healing you on your toes. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every condition that, that affects your movement is arrested right now. Whether it is a muscular or a neural or a skeletal condition, I declare it is healed now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be healed in your body. Be healed in your bloodstreams. Blood conditions be healed right now. I said blood conditions be healed now. Blood genotypes be changed from SS to AA. In the name of Jesus Christ. HIV be healed now. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's somebody here. Don't be ashamed. I won't call you out. But we would like to take your testimony privately. God is healing you of an STD. An STD. I won't call you out, but God is healing you of an STD, a sexually transmitted disease or infection. God is healing you. I don't know how you contacted it, but God is healing you by his mercy. He's setting you free right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, he's setting you free right now. That discharge comes to an end right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, so shall it be from today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Stretch your hands with me towards this request. Father, I declare by divine authority. I want you to shout a loud amen with me. Lord, I declare, let every prayer in this place be met with answers. In the name of Jesus Christ. I speak peace over families. Peace over families. Peace over families. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let financial conditions be arrested. Let every financial situation be turned around. Let debts be cancelled. Financial debts be cancelled. In the name of Jesus. I speak to prodigal sons and daughters. No matter how far they have strayed from the house, I call them back. I call them back. I call them back home. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I ask that you answer your children today. Answer them by fire. Let marital destinies be settled. Let job opportunities open up. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare divine elevation in your career. Divine acceleration over families. 
in the name of Jesus. Let age long captivity be arrested. Let age long captivity be arrested. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I declare testimonies upon testimonies. Answer your children, O God. And give them peace. Give them peace. Let there be a rain of testimonies. Let there be a rain of testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let health be restored. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let health be restored. In the name of Jesus, let health be restored. Anyone who has lost their job, let them be restored. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I want to pray for our students that are writing exams. I declare academic excellence. Academic success. Like never before. In the name of Jesus Christ, so shall it be. In this season, may doors open on your behalf. Hear me? May doors open on your behalf. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your testimonies will not be denied in this season. May the God that I serve, that you serve, answer you in this season. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. One more prayer and then I'll take an altar call and we are done tonight. Now hear me. Please. Please. Listen. We will not have time to take testimonies of those who are sick. There is still one more here. But listen. This is what you will do for me. Um, let's take advantage of the medical squad at the back, okay? And then maybe... Let's have one or two people with them there. This is what you will do for me. Check yourself. If you notice that God has healed you, I would want you to walk straight to the back. All right? Let our medical team be there and maybe one or two ministers be there. And then they would record your testimonies, okay? So that it can be shared, whether in your absence or in your presence. Is that okay? Is that okay? Are we blessed tonight? Please rise on your feet. One more prayer for you and then we'll take an altar call. God said I should sing this song for somebody. It is well, it is well with my soul. With my soul. It is well, it is well, it is well with your soul. Let's sing it one more time. Say it is well. soul and body it is well with you I rebuke the spirit of depression and discouragement I speak to your soul it is well with you in the name of Jesus Christ as God has healed you here he will heal your loved ones connected in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen finally let me pray for your spiritual life I declare from today, let laziness come to an end in your life. Every spirit that sponsors laziness in your spiritual life, that praying is difficult, reading the Bible is almost impossible, making you tired of the things of God, I banish that spirit from your life today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now I declare upon you fresh fire. I say fresh fire rest upon you. In this season, above all things, let your hunger for God be triggered. Let your hunger for God be increased. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that you will love the Lord sincerely. 
in this season, may your passion for God be rekindled. May you come to know the Lord sincerely. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May God set you on fire and may you be ablaze all through this month. I bring you into a season of divine revelations. Access into the portals of heavens. Let your dreams be restored. Let your visions be restored. In the name of Jesus Christ. May you walk with the Lord sincerely. May you experience his presence mightily. And I declare that it is well with you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Please, all standing, I want to make an altar call. Before we go, all standing, make sure there is no movement, security, protocol. I want to make an altar call. For me, this is the climax of this service. There must be one person here who is returning back to Jesus today. Just like our brother who had not been to church for a long time, for years. But God saved him, delivered him from addiction and healed him. I believe there are people here tonight that God wants to draw you to himself. He wants you saved. He wants to restore you back to himself. You are here and Jesus is not the Lord and Savior of your life. Probably you have never given your life to Jesus in the public like this before. This is your opportunity. This is your time. All standing, please, everywhere. Or perhaps you are here. You used to be a Christian and you loved God before now. But right now you are not really serious with God. You don't really know if you have a walk with God. You don't know if you have a relationship with God. You want God to restore you. This is your opportunity. Or you are here and you are struggling with an addiction. And you want God to deliver you. This is your opportunity. Wherever you are, I want you to put your right hand up. And I'm going to lead you to make some prayers right now. Forget about being ashamed. Forget about who is around you. God wants you to make your ways right with him. Or perhaps you are here. If Jesus comes tonight, you are not sure if you are going to go to heaven. You are not sure if you are going to be with him. I want you to be assured of your salvation. Join them and lift your right hand. Lift it high so that I can see you without struggling. God bless you. I'm seeing some hands. One, two, three, four. I'm seeing some hands. God bless you. Yes, more hands are coming up. If God is convicting you, let your hands be up. God bless you. Don't be ashamed. With your hands lifted up, I want you to walk to the front right now as quick as you can. Forget about who is around you and walk straight to the front. Come, Jesus is calling you. This is the best part of the service for you. Can you clap your hands for them? You make all things. Keep clapping for them. You make all things new and I will follow you. Please stretch your hands towards these ones. If you need to join them, join them quick. This is the best decision for them. This is the miracle for them. That they will receive the life of Jesus. The Bible says in 1 John 5, 11, That this is the record that God has given us eternal life. And he that had the son had life in himself. Please no movement anywhere. Let's finish this and then we are done with the service. Stretch your hands towards them and pray for them. Those of you in front, I want you to put your right hand on your chest. Those of you in front, I want you to know you are standing before the King of Kings. You are standing before the Lord Jesus. I'm only his representative. And I want you to mean business with the whole of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Say it again. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I repent of my sin. I receive you into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me. I declare that I am yours now and forever. In Jesus' name. Please keep your right hand on your chest. Father, I declare over these ones that their sins are forgiven. They are sealed by the blood of the Lamb. 
and their names are written in the Lamb's book of life. I decree and declare that they are born again from today, that they will serve you all the days of their lives. Fill them with your spirit. Let their lives never remain the same again. Let the hold of Satan over their lives be broken. Let the power of sin be broken over their lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. God bless you. All of you look at me. Thank you for this noble decision you have made, okay? You are welcome to the family of God and to the family of faith. You are now a bona fide son and daughter of God. This is what you do for me. Just turn to your left. And behind you, there is a lady waving her hand. I want you to walk straight to her on a single line. Our counselors will attend to you. God bless you. Please celebrate for God for them as they go. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Are you blessed tonight? While we're standing, let me just make two, three announcements and we are done. Please, like I said, if God has healed you, please, I beg you, we need to take the testimonies. Uh, make sure you walk straight to the back. Please, workforce coordinator, where are you? Yes, I want the medical team. Uh -huh. You see, there are people waving their hands. Yeah, walk straight there. Even if it's a headache that God healed you of, go there and give your testimony. When you testify, you seal your miracle. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the words of their testimony. When you testify of God healing a headache today, tomorrow he will heal cancer. But if you close your mouth for a headache healed today, tomorrow you are at risk of death. Alright? So please do that after the service and you'll be allowed to share your testimony either in person or it will be read as a praise report. And those of you that are following online, I'm very sure that you can send your testimony by way of typing on the comment section or by sending it as a text message to our public relations line or our email which should be displayed for you god bless you we want to receive your testimonies from everywhere across the, the globe and thank god for what god has done in your life in the name of jesus christ amen and amen next sunday is going to be a special impartation service hmm? amen yes so it's not going to be like today today we had to address a lot of things but next sunday is going to be a special impartation service i want you to come expecting god to do great things in your life come expecting to receive fresh oil fresh anointing to rest upon your life upon your business upon all that concerns you amen and amen so make sure you are here 3 p.m next sunday and the lord will do you good as you are coming please ensure you come with someone if you were brought here today, we honor you and we celebrate you. Thank you for your time. Please ensure when you are coming back next week, come with somebody. I thank God that uh, we've started sending buses to the Bolukutum Aziz, I believe. Yes. A bus went there today and came full. Amen. And so every one of you that have come from there and any other place, there will be buses to take you back in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So make sure you come with someone next week and let's trust God for an amazing time. Um, I want to also remind us quickly before we go, our crusading view is coming up on the 4th and the 5th of July. 4th and 5th of July. Can we celebrate God for that? Amen. Thursday and Friday, two days power pack crusade and then Saturday morning which is on the 6th will be a session for ministers, an impartation session for ministers, leaders, businessmen and women and all of that, okay? Uh, please, if you are a student and you reside in Bill and you are going to be there that period, please, this is what you help us do. We need volunteers. We need at least a hundred volunteers for our workforce. I hope that's a good number. We need at least a hundred, all right? This is a crusade, so it's going to be big. If you reside in Bill and you are here now and you are going to be there at that time, please, I'd like you to ensure that you are part of our workforce. I want you to volunteer with us. This is what you'll do for me. As soon as we close, rush to the back quickly to our public relations desk and put down your name and your contacts, okay? The boss will wait for you. Rush down there 
put down your name and contact, then you can go to your bosses or you can go home. We need volunteers there. And if you are following online and you are from Bill, please, we would like you to be part of our workforce as we prepare. Uh, there will be a way online for which you can participate and register quickly. It is free of charge. As a matter of fact, we may even have a meeting this week with the workforce that we are going to be setting up. Amen and amen. And God bless us for that in Jesus' name. And if there's any way you want to support us, you have a property, a house that you feel you, we can use, or you want to pay for a hotel for me, say amen. I'm just joking. Amen. Whatever kind of support you want to give, material, financial, or in person, please ensure you meet, just meet any of our officials, any of our workers. They will direct you to the workforce coordinator and then you'll be told what to do, okay? So before you go, if there's any way you know you can assist us, please just meet any OSHA, any protocol, they'll direct you to the coordinator of our workforce and then you'll be told how you can support. And may God prosper this work in Jesus' name. Breakfast prayer initiative for all workers, working class people, is on the 15th of this month by 8.30 a.m. at Fina Hall. Make sure you are there. And God bless you. And see all the workers tomorrow by 4.30 p.m. Rise on your feet and let's share the grace. Amen and amen. Are you blessed tonight? Wave your hands and give Jesus praise. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to appreciate you for your time. Thank you for staying till this time. May God bless and honor you. May the grace of God rest upon you. This week you will experience exploits in the name of Jesus Christ. Come back with a harvest of testimonies and may you go from glory to glory. Jesus mighty name we pray. Who is Asabe? Asabe. Your middle name is Asabe. Where are you? Where are you? Huh? Asabe. Come. You see, I said your word can come even at the end. Clap for Jesus. Asabe. Huh? Your middle name is Asabe. My name. My name. Oh, it's your name that is Asabe. Do people usually call you that name or there's another name they call you? No, it's my name. I know. Which name do people call you more? Is it Asabe or another name? This name. Asabe? Step forward. What's wrong with you? I saw you walking somehow. Is there anything wrong with your legs? Huh? No. All right. Can you open your two hands before me? Listen to me. Look at me. Just leave her, leave her, leave her. Leave her. God is releasing substance over your family. Are you hearing me? God is releasing substance. No more empty handedness. Are you hearing me? No more lack. No more want in your family. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. In the name of Jesus. And I place an anointing upon you as God is visiting your family and bringing an end to lack and empty handedness. I declare by the grace of God upon you today, may your destiny take a new turn. Everything that has tried to cover you, let it be destroyed from today. May your destiny experience announcement and visibility. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. It is done. God bless you. Return back to your seat. Clap your hands and give Jesus praise. Amen. The Bible says, For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Surely his goodness and mercy shall follow us days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Now hear this. Uh, just so that you will know very soon we are going to put our most of my itineraries and all our programs will be on our website our website www.sgniglobal.org so you can go there see all our programs all my itineraries and then be a part 
And may God bless you in Jesus' name. I believe this month we are going uh, to NCCF. There's going to be a three days conference there. So, those of you that would like to be there, be there. And um, you will see many more on our website. God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Shake hands with two or three people and tell them this.